Okay, so we're looking at um, exercise 6C from the second year mechanics textbook. Um, so chapter six on projectiles, and one question 13. Um, okay, so a projectile, sorry, a particle is projected from a point on level ground with, oops, going on there, um, an initial speed of u meters per second um, at an angle of elevation of alpha, okay? Um, and then it's going to just move freely under gravity. So it's going to go up for a bit. Gravity is going to slow it down in the vertical direction. And it's going to come back down and hit the ground. Okay. And then they give you two bits of information. They tell me that its maximum height, which is going to be at that point there, is 42. And they tell me that it travels a distance of 196 horizontally before it hits the ground. And that, I think, yep, it's the only information they give me, and then they ask me to find alpha in you. So this is worth nine marks, so it's, it's, it's going to be a challenge, let's just say. Okay, so um, let's first of all start thinking about this point here. So, um, so I'm, interested, I'm, I'm interested in its vertical motion at that point, because obviously that, not, that 42 metres is, um, it was 42, wasn't it? Yeah, that 42 metres is how high it gets in the vertical direction. So vertically, its initial velocity, so its initial velocity upwards, so I want the vertical component um, of U, that's opposite the angle alpha, so that's gonna be capital U sine alpha, okay? Um, I'm taking up as positive, so its acceleration is gonna be minus G, so obviously gravity is always working down, um, its displacement is 42 meters. And uh, this, is, this is a harder question, but this idea has come up quite a lot. So whenever they talk about the maximum height, what is special at that point is that's the point where its vertical velocity is zero. So it starts off with, with um, U sine alpha, which is, has its initial vertical velocity. It's gonna be slowing down vertically due to gravity. That, that instant it's stationary, and then it starts coming back down with a negative vertical velocity. So its vertical velocity at that point is zero. Um, so I can put that into the Suvat equation, v squared equals u squared plus two as. So zero squared, be careful with brackets here, is u sine alpha all squared plus two times minus g. So that'll just make the whole thing minus um, times 42. So the two times the 42 make that minus 84g. Okay, and then let's square out those brackets. So I've got to square the u. You know from your, your trig identities that convention says that sine alpha all squared we write like that. Okay, so we'll come back to that. So, so that's got two unknowns in it's got capital U and alpha, but hopefully that will come in handy later on. Okay. Right, so then, so that's that. Why I was thinking about the map, the top point there. Let's now have a think about this point here where it hits the ground. So, what do I know about that point? Well, I know that its horizontal displacement is 196 because it told me that in the question, and I know that its vertical displacement is zero because even though obviously between its start point and when it hits the ground, it's it's moved, but in terms of its vertical displacement, it's ended up back at, at ground level. So it's, it's vertical displacement at that point is zero. So let's use those. And um, so let's go horizontally first, because that's usually easier. Okay, so horizontally, so the initial velocity in the horizontal direction is that component there. So that's adjacent to alpha. So that is going to be capital U cos alpha. There is no acceleration, so you don't worry about air resistance or anything like that. So um, the um, so I don't need to use that. It's constant velocity horizontally, um, and I'm taking right as positive. So I know that its horizontal displacement when it hits the ground was 196, and let's call time the t. Okay, so um, so I don't need to use the Suvat equation. I can just use displacement is velocity times time because that initial velocity is its velocity throughout its journey. So S is 196, its velocity is U cos alpha times by T. Okay, so then let's think, 
vertically at that same point. So we've already said its initial vertical velocity is u sine alpha, and I'm taking up as positive. Its acceleration is minus g, so gravity is working downwards. Um, its displacement is zero, so it's, it's coming back to the ground where it started from. Um, and t, I'm calling capital T at that point. So I'm saying that at this point here, when it hits the ground, I'm calling that um, something that happens after capital T seconds. Okay, so for that, I'm going to use S equals ut plus a half a t squared. So S is zero. U is capital U sine alpha. T, I'm calling capital T. A half a, it's going to be minus a half g, because a is minus g, and I'm calling that capital T. Right, so now we're getting on. Right, so we've got three equations now. Uh, so three equations and three unknowns. So my three unknowns are capital U, alpha, and capital T. So this should be solvable. So I've got to think about the most sensible way to do it. So I don't need T. I need alpha and capital U. So I think the sensible way to go, and you have had to do this in various ways in things like easier questions than this, but it's going to be to rearrange this one to make T the subject. And then substitute T, oops, I have the wrong one, substitute T into that equation there. Okay, so hopefully if you've got through um, well, the rest of this chapter and the earlier questions in this exercise, you've, you've had to use this idea a few times, just now we're using it in a really tricky question. Okay, so it's U um, sine alpha, and where it says T, I am substituting 196 over U cos alpha, and then minus a half G, and where it says T, I am substituting in 196 over U cos alpha. Okay, right. So, how's that getting on? So, let's simplify that down. So, that U and that U are going to cancel. Um, and I can write, um, I don't know that, I, I think I'm going to leave, um, yeah, that's 196 sine alpha over cos alpha. Sine alpha over cos alpha is tan alpha. So, if you've written that or you would have written that, that's absolutely lovely. I'm not going to, just because I want to see sort of what's going to happen when I when I come to use that. So I'm going to just leave it in terms of sine and cosine for now, but there's certainly a possibility that I'll, I'll want to rewrite that as tan alpha. Okay, and then just being careful, so now I'm just looking to um, sort of simplify this term here. So in terms of numbers, I've got the 196 squared, but then I've also got that half, um, and the whole thing is going to be negative. So I'm getting that as... Oops, you see that? I'm getting that as 19208, and then I've also got the G, and then that is all over, and don't forget to square that denominator, so the U gets squared, and um, the cos alpha gets squared. Okay, so I'll be quite impressed if I haven't done something wrong there, but we'll, we'll go with it. Right, okay, so now I've got two equations, so let's go back to, to this one as well. So if I remember that one says, so it's u squared sine squared alpha minus 84g, and did that equal zero? Yeah, and that equals zero. Okay, um, so two equations and two unknowns. Yeah, alpha and um, u are my unknowns. So the question now is the most sensible way to solve this. Um, I don't like all these fractions. Um, so one thing I'm considering is I could make u squared the subject of this one and then substitute into this one, but then I'm going to sort of have a fraction on the bottom of a fraction. So not not say so, I'm not guaranteeing I'm going to do this in the, in the quickest way, but hopefully we'll get to an answer. So in fact, I think what I'm going to do with this one here is multiply through by cos squared. Okay, um, in fact, no, I'll tell you what I'm going to do first. I'm going to add the left, the minus... Um, 19208g over u squared cos squared alpha. I'm going to add that over to the left hand side. And then I'm going to um, cross multiply, I'm going to multiply up by cos squared. So that will make, there will be quicker ways of doing this. I'm just going to try and really break it down and do it stage by stage. So that would make that. 
that. Okay, and I might also multiply up by the, um, so I so I should say, so it's really clear, I've multiplied both sides through by cos squared alpha there. Um, okay, so I might also want to multiply up by the u squared as well, or what's going to be the best thing to do here? Um, yeah, okay, so apologies if I'm doing this in a really round the houses way, but I think I can see how to get to an answer. Okay, so I'm going to multiply up by the u squared. Okay, then I am going to make u squared the subject of this. So this is the other equation that I haven't used yet. So if I add the 84g over and divide by sine squared alpha, I get u squared as the subject. I'm going to substitute that in for there and then I'm going to keep my fingers massively crossed that this is then going to work out. Okay, so I think, well, I'm bringing a huge star of relief, I think it is. So u squared I'm going to substitute for 84g over sine squared alpha 